Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video where today you'll see we're not in a go-kart well I mean technically we are in a go-kart but we're not actually racing today we're actually going to be having a little bit of a discussion so as you've probably seen from the title the BIKC national finals is this weekend as of filming and hopefully when you're actually watching this so I feel like this is a good time to discuss why I don't feel like the BIKC is very fair. Now, you would have seen in my, one of my last videos, um, we competed in the regional finals and we got completely shafted by a bad kart in qualifying, which pretty much put us out of contention of doing well at all. Um, now, I feel like after making this video is probably going to make me feel a bit like a sore loser. And I don't blame you for saying that. But I also feel like not many people are actually discussing or discussing publicly that the BIKC is just at the minute of the current format, it feels very look based. It doesn't feel very skill based. Now BIKC is obviously advertised as this big indoor karting championship, top of the top, you know, winner gets a full season of Club 100 paid for, a Club 100 scholarship. So yeah, so I feel like this is a good way to get people from indoor to outdoor, especially the more skilled people and just to show their skill set in a much more competitive environment, envi environment, which is Club 100. But unfortunately, I don't feel like the way it's run at the minute that everyone with a good enough skill set will be able to actually win that chance. And we're going to be discussing why. So on my phone, I've written a few notes. Um, we've got five categories that I want to go over. Uh, the first one's the format. The second one's the rules. The third one is weight. Fourth one's carts. And the fifth one is how I would run the BIKC. So first category, format. The current, I feel like the local finals at the minute are fine. Keep it. There's a 15 minute qualifying and a 15 minute race. It just feels like a normal members race, you're all weight categoried, so you know, no one's going to have an advantage, no one's going to have a disadvantage. Yeah, I feel like that is completely fine. But yeah, even if you get a bad kart in qualifying, you know, and you're going to start pretty much down the field, I feel like if you're going to be deserving of going through to regionals, you're going to be quick enough for the top six. So keep qualifying as it is, keep the, the local finals as it is. But where I feel like the problem's going to come up is in the regional finals and the national finals. Now the current format for both regionals and nationals is you get 15 minute qualifying, which determines your first two heat positions, so heat one and heat two. Semi-final is determined, the starting position for your semi-finals determined on your finishing positions from heat one and heat two, so obviously points based. And then the top six of each semi-final goes through to the grand final. Obviously the fastest, whoever gets the fastest lap out of each position, so obviously if you place first and you get a quicker lap time than the guy who finished first in the second semi-final, you'll be ahead of him, you get the gist. But I feel like with that format, it brings a lot more look into it than it does skill. What do I mean by that though? So with qualifying and the rules that which we'll get into a bit later, it means you cannot swap your car in qualifying. So if you get a bad car in qualifying, that is going to set you up so badly for not only for the heats, but also for the semis and a good chance of doing well in the grand final. As we all know, the grand final is the top three from the A final that go through to Warrington for the national finals. And if you're starting like I did at the very bottom because of qualifying, you've got to fight your way to the top. It, you're just not going to have a good time with it. So like I say, with me being an example, you probably see a few videos ago, I competed in the regional finals, I did the locals, came third, and fourth in the regional finals. And I got a really bad car in qualifying. Yep, I got a, such a bad car in qualifying, and it put me, I had to start both of my first two heats in that last place. And heat one, I finished fifth, so I went up six positions in the eight minute race which was incredible, but it also means instead of starting fifth for heat two, even if you did it on fastest lap, finishing positions from heat one, I would have started at fifth for heat two, but no, I had to start 11th once again. I had to fight my way back through the field. Now, doing that, because you've exploited everyone's weakness in the 
first heat, it also means you've, you know, they're going to know where you're going to attack from in heat two. So A, you're going to have to find a different weakness for the person you've got to get past. And B, you have to do all that hard work all again, just to, you know, basically start you in a mediocre position for the semi-finals and then you got to fight your way through the semi-finals to try and get a good position for the grand final. I just feel like having... I feel like to improve that, having three mixed grid heats would be so much better than just having a qualifying in two heats. So if you have three mixed grid heats, it shows you need to have good race craft to get through the field if you're starting last. If you're starting in the front, you need to show that you've got good speed to keep everyone behind away. And in the middle, it's going to be a mix of both speed and racecraft. And that just shows that keep the semi-final the same so that finishing positions from heat one, two and three are points based, which will then put you into the semi-final. And the semi-final and grand final, you can keep them the same. I've not got a problem with them. It's just getting to the semi-finals and to the grand finals. Having three, yeah, having three mixed grid heats just makes so much more sense than having qualifying determine your starting position for the first two heats. I don't really understand who would make that rule anyway. And another thing I've noted down here as well is the groups for the regionals, they need to be better organised. If you'll see here that the group that I was put in for the, for the qualifying and the first two heats, we had every single local champion in that heat. Why was there not, why can't you like split it up so you have two champions in one group, two champions in another, two seconds, two seconds, two thirds, two thirds. That just makes so much more sense and literally here you've got all the local champions, you've got most of the second and third runner-ups as well and it's, yeah, like I say, if I, I believe if my qualifying in regionals happened in the other group, I would have started sixth or seventh. I haven't actually got the qualifying for that. So if someone could send me that, actually would be really helpful. But, you know, it just means I started dead last because I was stuck in the very fast group where I'm going to need a quick car and I just wasn't given a quick car, unfortunately. So yeah, I feel like the format needs to change drastically for it to be a lot more fairer. And I believe it was, if someone could comment before, I believe it was three mix heats before, so I don't understand why they've changed it. <laughs> but yeah. So, second category, the rules. Now, I've got a lot of, um, I've got a lot of comments here. So, to begin with, the 2023 regulations, the document is pixely. I don't understand why it's pixely, because the 2022 is clear as day. And to me, that just shows that team sport do not care about this championship at all because I don't understand why they would release a very pixelated rule document, which is very important as well to read through. So what's the first rule that I just can't make sense of? You cannot swap a car in qualifying, but you can in a race. <laughs> Why? I don't understand that. Surely it'd be the opposite way around. Swap a car in qualifying, but not swapping it in a race. Because if you can swap in a race and you're going into swap and it's already started, you've lost already. So what is the point? It would make more sense to swap in qualifying if you've got bad cards, but at least give you a better chance of qualifying higher with a bit of a better car. But... But yeah, I just, I, I don't understand that. Why, why in a race and why not in qualifying? The red flag rule. Now this is funny because I've had a few people say, say this to me that they, this red flag rule, so if you don't know, in the regionals and nationals, if a red flag happens, the race will be restarted from the positions from a, the last completed lap. Which, to be fair, makes sense. I can understand why that makes sense. Now, this could also be manipulated in many ways. So if you get overtaken and you decide to just drive yourself into a wall and wedge yourself in there, forcing a red flag, you can then get your position back just like that. You've, there's no consequences for driving into a barrier yourself. There's no consequences for getting stuck. And because of that, the race gets red flagged. You get the positions restarted from the last completed lap and you get that position back. So that could be manipulated very, very easily. Now, I do like the idea of having a red flag and restarting the race, 
because that does seem fair. That's the same in F1, and that's the same in many motorsports. Red flag race, it will go back to a previous lap. But the thing is, though, they're in the top, top form of their race division. In rental karting, it's a bit different. How would I change it, though? Um, is a good question. I feel like having the positions just stay the same just makes a lot more sense. Restart the race, yeah, but just have the positions the same as they were before you red flagged it. Um, obviously, I can understand that someone might argue that because, you know, maybe someone overtook them during the red and, you know, if they restarted like that, all right, fair enough. Um, so there's a lot of trust in the drivers with that one. But, yeah, I feel like that's just a better way of doing it than just basically having a rule that can be easily manipulated. <laughs> oh yeah, so looking through the regulations as well, there's a compulsory sunstrip rule. Luckily they didn't actually put this into play. Uh, just quickly, I don't really make sense of this. So if you got through to the regionals, you'd have to wear a sunstrip on your helmet and it was compulsory to wear it through regionals, internationals. Now what if you've got a sponsor that you have to wear it on? that's it you know do you lose your sponsorship because of that but luckily this wasn't into place but i just found that a bit funny a bit funny and just quickly as well making a competitor pay 10 pounds to protest rule 3.6.2 and not allowing a personal camera footage to be used so you're paying 10 pounds so you're forcing a racer to pay 10 pounds to protest something that's happened on track and you're not even allowing them to use their own personal footage. It has to be through the CCTV of the team sport venue. That would be okay if there was lots and lots and lots of cameras around the team sport venue. But from what I'm aware, there's not that many. There's only one certain view that someone's gonna have on the incident if there is CCTV on that corner. And just making someone pay £10 to protest. I know if the protest comes good, you can get the £10 back, but if it doesn't, they keep the £10. This just sounds like a complete money-making championship, just like that. £10 to protest. To protest what? So you get taken out, you protest it, you've got to pay £10 because someone's taken you out. Anyway, we're going to go into the third category, weight. It's not really much to talk about weight. But I feel like for the lightweights, to make it a bit more fairer, to make it a minimum weight. So what is it? So it's under 75 kilos for the lightweights, middles 75 to 90, and then heavies 90 plus. So for lightweights, I feel like they need to be a minimum weight to begin with, to make anything fair, because you could be, you could weigh 40 kilogram and you're racing someone that's 75 kilogram. Now that 75 kilogram guy might not help being 75 kilogram because of his height, because of his build, but the guy who weighs 40 kilogram could be four foot and weigh nothing. That just doesn't really seem very fair to me. So making the weight a minimum would make that category a lot fairer than it is. And you could also say the same about middleweights as well, because there's a 15 kilogram difference from minimum to maximum weight. And that is such a big difference. If you weigh 75 kilogram, you're racing someone that weighs 89 kilogram. That's a massive difference. And that guy who weighs 89 kilogram won't be able to race in heavyweights because he can't put any additional ballast on himself to put him into that heavyweight category. So he has to weigh, so he has to race in middleweights. So yeah, that's the other thing as well, ballast, adding additional ballast. You cannot add any additional ballast onto yourself. So if you have ankle weights on to put yourself, so like say, for example, like we were there, if you're 89 kilogram and you want to race in heavies, because that makes a lot more sense than racing in middle weights, you have to race in the middle weights. You cannot put an ankle weight on that's an extra kilogram to boost yourself up into the heavyweights. You have to race at your race weight without any ballast at all and i just cannot make sense of that i you i can understand not putting ballast onto the car because it might damage it etc etc but just the one kilogram ankle weight you cannot put it on I, d I don't understand why i do not understand why okay category four the carts themselves now this one is very self-explanatory the carts are bad we all know team sport carts are very bad um some are worse than others 
Um, say some tracks have got brand new carts, some tracks have got really old carts, which are obviously going to be a lot more different to across the fleet. Um, it's the same with render cart and anywhere, you know, no two carts are going to be the same. End of. So, but there's something in the rules. Rule 4.8.1 states all carts used in the championship will be tested prior to use in the competition to ensure parity. Now, here we go, lads, because of leads from what we can all gather and from a source that we've been told, the carts were not tested prior to competition. Why? Why are Team Sport now breaking their own rules when they're enforcing other rules? For example, the local lightweight champion in Coventry was disqualified from the whole championship because he swapped his cart before the grand final. And I'm not joking, that, that, that happened. That actually happened. If they're enforcing rules like that to, to happen, how come they're not enforcing their own rules on, you know, on any, any site? So we did a couple of practice sessions, me and Supercop Wandy and a lot of other people did a few practice sessions in Leeds prior to the regionals. And we all had a good idea what the good carts were and what the bad carts were. Now, we all knew, I knew, cart free was terrible. As you'll see here, I've got a load of messages saying the cart free was bad. And I believe if I can find it, there's a thing here you'll see in the, uh, Leicester, in the Leicester Facebook group that states that the staff have not tested the carts. I just cannot understand this rule. At all. I cannot understand why there's a rule in the regulations that states that the carts will be tested to not test them and that have a bad car in the fleet, which unfortunately I got in qualifying and that just sent me off to not go to Warrington without even trying. So I've been up to Leeds twice, that's four hours of my life just from travelling, just to get to Leeds to practice for an hour each, so that's six hours of my life that's just been completely wasted with fuel costs, with the cost of actually practicing at Leeds, out the window because I got a one bad car in qualifying. Because was it tested? Probably not. If it was tested, they'd have known that it's just, it was just useless. <sighs> and yeah, okay, I may, maybe a little bit salty about it, of course it would be, but I think anyone would be. So all that time and effort to practice and get used to the track, just to be completely wiped out straight away without even getting into a car was just wiped out. Now, I just cannot understand why Team Sport would have a track to host regional finals to not test their, their fleet. Now, obviously it's a bit scarce on when they can be tested, so maybe they were tested before the locals, but even though we went to Leeds a week after the local finals, and cart free, I got cart free in the last race in the Need for Speed event, and it was terrible, so it obviously hadn't been tested, or if it was tested, it, yeah, it's it's still there. Either way, that cart is there. It's a known a bad cart, which was put into the pool of carts for the regional finals. And I just don't, I, I feel like if they want to make this better, to test the carts a day before the weekend regionals, or at least have time sheets of the cart that were tested so if someone wants to protest a bad cart they can give them the time sheet from a week before from you know a few days before whenever it was tested to show that actually with the same driver there are two tenths within all the other carts obviously it doesn't say two tenths in the rules but two tenths is the general the general set of how the cart differs so i feel like that would just be a much better way to just 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 test the car team sport just test the carts before you run BIKC. What is hard about that? What is hard? I do not understand why the carts are not being tested in this grand tournament that you've put on to set the best of the best, just to knock the good ones down, some of the good ones down, because you gave them a rubbish cart in qualifying and with a stupid format that's on, it just does not work and it just does not set the scene to put their best drivers from Warrington. What it does is it makes the lucky people and the skilled people come together to have this national final of the luckiest people and the skilled people. So, five. How would I run a BRKC? 
So as I've pretty much going to go over again, local finals are the same as they are if the carts are properly tested. So test the carts before locals, test the carts before regionals and obviously test the carts before nationals. And make sure there is a list or not a list but a graph, whatever, just to show what car has done what time in the five minute test that they've done, just to show that they're within two tenths of each other, just to show that they are within two tenths of each other. Regional national finals, I'd have the three random grid heats uh, without qualifying, so the best drivers can show both good race pace and good race craft. Semis and finals are fine as they are. And yeah, just actually make sure that all carts are tested. Have the allocated team sport venue publish the times that each cart has done the day before the local national regional day. And again, it just shows that team sport are willing to put on a good championship, a fair championship that will show who the most skilled drivers are. Because at the minute, it doesn't. It does not show the most skilled drivers. Obviously, the more skilled drivers, yes, of course they'll get through. Was I the quickest on the day of my regionals? No. What I've got through, if I've got a good car, I don't know. But I would have had a very good chance of fighting for that. But being at the back, at the very back, because of the way the formats run, I had to fight very, very hard to even make it just to make it through to the grand final. And I just feel like that is me being hard done by car difference and it just shows that I've got no looking cart in as we all know. And I just, yeah. But yeah, I feel like we need to discuss this because I feel like someone needs to say this publicly. And obviously a lot of people say about BIKC and not you know, how bad it's run, you know, how it needs to change, but I don't see anyone out there actually doing it publicly. So I feel like this video needs to come out, especially before the national finals. Just team sport, you need to change it. You need to change it so much. Yeah, just, yeah. But yeah, thank you very much for watching YouTube. Um, a bit of a different video. You need an excuse to try out these red microphones, which I cannot seem to get to work on my phone, which is why this has been currently filmed for the GoPro. Um, yeah, so if anyone's got any experience with these Rode Wireless Go microphones, please send me an a DM on Instagram because I cannot get it to work at all. I'm trying about 5,000 different things at this point, but for whatever reason, I just can't get it to work. I only get it to work on the GoPro. Anyway, ignore that. That's why it's been filmed off the GoPro, which is why it looks a bit funny. So, thank you very much for watching YouTube. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you want to see enough more discussions, if you want to give us another discussion topic, let me know. Um, I've got a few that I would like to say, preferably more packed with team sport. Um, electric karting versus petrol karting, I feel like is a good discussion to have. But yeah, thank you very much for watching YouTube. Uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one, which is actually going to be a team sport beat. So uh, yeah, I'll see you then.